Hello everyone, welcome back or welcome to a new episode of Here for the Crack with me, Emma Neil. I hope you're all doing good. Oh my god, the sun is out. I feel like this is going to be the last few days we get of summer, so I'm really just trying to be so grateful for it and enjoy it because, you know, as you all know, we really haven't had much of a summer this year, so I've been, see, I feel like everyone thinks I'm a sun hater after, you know, with me preaching about staying safe in the sun and doing the episode on skin cancer and looking after your skin and everything. But the thing is, I am a sun worshipper. Like, I am a little sun baby. I'm obsessed with the sun. I would absolutely love to live in a climate. See, this is the thing. I love the four seasons. You know, I don't need to live somewhere where it's sunny all year round or anything like that. In fact, I'd actually hate that. However, I wish I lived somewhere that just got a proper summer and I feel like everyone in the UK and Ireland can agree with me on that. Like I don't care how cold it gets in the winter, I don't care how windy it is the rest of the year and how rainy it is. If you could guarantee three months of sun, oh my god, I think we'd all be changed people. Everyone's so nice when the sun comes out, everyone's like just so full of juice and so like excited about life. I find I come out of my shell a lot more when the sun's out. I find myself making a lot more social plans and just like wanting to be outside and active more, which I know is such a shame. Like they do say there's no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothes, which, you know, I kind of agree with, like slap the waterproofs on, what are you waiting for? You're not made of sugar, but also mm, this is not really always the vibe, you know, it's not really always what you want to do when it's absolutely freezing and chucking it down. I'm a lover of like being really at peace with the fact that it's raining outside and just like taking it as a cozy day. There's nothing that could really make me want to go out and not, to be honest. But yeah, I've been enjoying these last few days. I reckon by the time you're listening to this, that will be, that little good spell of weather will be well over and we will well and truly be into autumn. I really wanted to record this outside. I thought that would be really cute. Like, I do want to do a couple of outside episodes when the sun's out because imagine just like, you know, sipping a nice little ice cold drink, a little kombucha in the sun, iced coffee, hear the birds chirping in the background. Like, That would be kind of a cute episode, no? I feel like visually that would look really nice as well in the sun, but I don't think my neighbours would fancy listening to me chat that much shit. And especially today we're doing a little girly chats episode, I'm going to be answering all of your dilemmas and like, you know, my 70 year old neighbour doesn't really need to hear all of your dilemmas. (laughs) God love her. Yeah, I think that's probably the last thing she wants to hear on a nice sunny day sitting out of back garden. So... Uh, yeah, I'm putting that one on the back burner. If I can find somewhere that's like private enough to film outside, that would be stunning, but I don't think that's going to happen. What have I been up to this week? I feel like this has been one of those weeks where it's just kind of flown past and you're like, wait, what have I done this week, if anything? But I had a really nice night last night. We went to the girls' bathroom live podcast show. It was the second live podcast show I've been to ever because I went to my therapist ghosted me with my mum, which was so good. Like, I'm just obsessed with my therapist goes to me and I've been to see Joanne McNally stand up before. So I just knew that was going to be a good show. Like the two of them together, it's very much a comedy podcast and therefore you know you're going to get a comedy show. You know, you don't need like a big production or anything where that's concerned because the two of them can just carry it. Whereas the girls' bathroom, I really didn't know what to expect because obviously Sophia and Chinzia, like their podcast is just so chill like they just sit down on a sofa they just read through dilemmas and I was like how are they gonna bring that to life in a show like how do you make a show out of that are they just gonna keep it really chill and just be them on stage on sofas doing the same kind of thing like almost as if it's a bit of a live recording but maybe with a bit of like interaction from the audience or some people maybe having sent in dilemmas in advance that are gonna be there on the night and they get them up on stage you know I kind of envisioned that But it actually wasn't that at all. It was a lot more of like a production. It was like a space theme, an outer space theme. And the whole rhetoric was that, you know, they hated the earth and men on the earth. So they traveled to this other planet that was girls only. And so we were like going on this journey to this other planet. And then we all arrived there together and they like welcomed us. And they very much like stuck to that theme the entire time. Oh my God, their outfits unbelievable have you been seeing them on instagram insane 
it's honestly giving Kardashians like their whole photo shoots and everything backstage. So yeah, like the outfits and the visually, like the stage, like the set, the set with all the planets and also the visuals in terms of the video on the screen, like the, the... what do you call that? Why the words on the tip of my tongue? Oh my god, I don't know. Like the animation, basically, like the, all the animation stuff that was going on on the screen behind them was insane. But I think they like stuck to the theme a little bit too much, where it was like, okay, I just want you to sit down and like just chat and just like be chill and just like do what you're good at. Do you know what I mean? But it was still like a really fun night, and they were amazing. And hats off to them for being able to just like do that in front of a crowd that size I think it's absolutely insane I think it's insane the fact that any podcast can sell out a fucking tour like that like it's so impressive I definitely want to go to some more live podcast shows I really want to go see I'm Grandmom live I think theirs would be fucking hilarious I think it would be similar vibes like my therapist goes to me where it's just so funny from start to finish almost like a comedy show what else do I want to go see oh I'd love to see GK Barry live I also think Max Belag their live would be hilarious. I'm just so bad with getting tickets. Like I'm so bad with knowing when things are going on sale and then actually remembering to sit down and do that. But I want to try and do that because I've discovered this about myself. I actually love going to like theatres and shows and, you know, like live events. That's my thing. Not necessarily always music events. Actually, sometimes I find music events a bit overwhelming. But when it's like comedy gigs live podcast shows, musicals, ballets. Oh my God, I love ballets. I'm such a, I'm a show gal. I'm a theater gal. So yeah, that's something I definitely want to like try and get better at getting tickets for because it's such a nice thing to do like with your friends or even date night or something like that. I've had a way better week than last week. You will be glad to hear. Thank God that week's over, honestly. I've been living it up with Tigger in my company. She's become a house cat. Guys, I was debating on the last episode whether to keep her as or sorry if I would let her out or not because I was scared the same thing would happen and I was like you know what I'll see how I go if she's happy enough with being a house cat and like isn't meowing loads at the door then great we'll stick to it but I feel like it would be cruel if she was like really begging to get out all the time you know seeing as that's what she's used to I thought if I do have to let her out I'll maybe try and do like a few things to like train her to make sure to come back you know like shaking the treats and Yeah, just doing little things, put on the collar, all that kind of shit. And she hasn't meowed at the door once. Well, sorry, that's a lie. She has meowed at the door maybe like twice, but on both occasions it was just because she needed the toilet and then she went in the litter tray and then she didn't meow at the door again. Like once she realizes the litter tray is there, then she stops. So she actually seems so content being an indoor cat at the moment. And today I was sitting out in the sun for 15 minutes and... I love a little, you know, when the sun's out and you're like, okay, I I can't spend all day out in this. Like I've got work to do, you know, but just give myself 15 minutes here, like eat my lunch in the sun, drink a little ice drink, maybe listen to a podcast on speaker. Do you know what I mean? That is so nice. Just having that time to yourself. So anyway, that's what I was doing. And I thought maybe I'll let her come out with me and see what she does here. If she's going to run away on me again. And no, she was really good. She just sat on the chair beside me and then went back inside with me. Literally followed me back inside after 10 minutes. So yeah, looks like Tigger is a house cat now, which I'm really happy about because, you know, she's getting older. As I said, she might be going a bit senile, a bit blind. And so I think that's just what's best for the time being. Well, probably for the future. Oh, I had my doctor's appointment I was telling you guys about because I wanted to get an antibiotic cream for my perioral dermatitis because I'd been researching online like things to use on it and I didn't want to take the oral antibiotics. So I had a phone consultation with my doctor and I was like, look, you've prescribed me the antibiotics. I know that's an option, but I just feel like, you know, this could be a recurring thing. I don't want to have to take these maybe twice a year can you prescribe me the cream and he was like yeah to be honest I don't know why you weren't prescribed the cream that would normally be the first protocol is to get the cream and then if it didn't clear to get the antibiotics so thank god that was an easy process got the cream guys it's nearly cleared I am so delighted like it's not quite gone yet but it is so much better and it's been two days of using it so I have faith I think this is like fingers crossed gonna clear it within the week let's do pit and peak of the week okay my pit of this week Wait, I actually don't have a pit of this week. This has been a gorgeous week. I have nothing to complain about right now. My peak of this week, I've been so social this week. I've seen literally every single 
one of my friends on just like different occasions and doing different things. Well, not every single one of them, but do you know what I mean? I've seen a lot of friends in the last week and I'm proud of myself for that and I feel good about it. And yeah, I was just going to the girls' bathroom with them the other night. It was really fun. We went out for dinner before. We got a drink after dinner and then headed around to the show. They actually went out after, but your girl on her little sober sin, I was ready to call it a night after that. I wanted to get home to my bed so I could wake up early in the morning for Pilates. I'm planning on doing a sea swim tomorrow morning as well, which I haven't done in so long. And I'm just so excited about that. That will 100% be my peak for next week. Recommendation of this week. Oh my God, it has to be the little bread slicer. If you haven't used the little bread slicer before, you're seriously missing out. Tomorrow, get up, go to little first thing and get a fresh loaf of bread and use their bread slicer. It is one of the simple pleasures in life and it makes me so happy. I feel like a little child that's like easily entertained watching that happen. (laughs) Now, not every little has them, I know, for example, like sometimes I pop into the little in town when I'm in town for Pilates on the way home and that one definitely doesn't have it. Oh my God, there's two things in little that are really fun actually. The bread slicer and the orange juice thing where it like, you know, you put the bottle underneath and it keeps squeezing out the oranges. You get freshly squeezed orange juice like in Spain. Oh, so good. So yeah, take a trip to little and use the bread slicer and the fresh orange juice juicer. The fre- fresh orange juice juicer. Yeah, whatever it is. But yeah, not every little has them. You need to go to like the big littles and they'll have them there. And you get to pick your thickness of the slices of bread. And I was buying a loaf from my mum as well. So I got to try out two different levels of thickness. There's three options, but I'm going to go back and I'm going to try the third one when I next need a loaf of bread. And then I'll know what my like favorite millimeter of slice of bread is. <laughs> God, that is so sad. The video I put up of it on TikTok has literally gone viral though. Everyone's so shook that that's a thing. Like loads of people didn't know that was a thing, which is making me think it's really not in very many littles. So fingers crossed it's in your local little. If you literally have no idea what I'm talking about, go and watch my TikTok of it. So satisfying. Oh, little book club update. The book club book of this month is a book called, is it Young Mungo? Young Mungo. Yeah, I think that's it. I can't remember who it's by, sorry. It follows the story of a boy growing up in... Wait, actually, sorry. I'm going to get this wrong, so I'm just going to read the description (laughs) that I put in the book club broadcast channel. The novel follows Mungo Hamilton, a teenager navigating a life of poverty and parental neglect in the early 1990s Glasgow. When the character falls in love with a boy named James, he must confront the homophobia, toxic masculinity and religious conflicts of the society of his time. Now, when I set this as the book club book, I had a lot of messages being like, oh my God, this book is unreal, but serious trigger warnings. So just a little reminder to everyone of the trigger warnings in this book. It involves descriptions of abuse in various forms from sexual to physical and psychological So if you find those things particularly triggering or harmful and distressing, maybe skip this one. But the reviews on this book are insane. That's why I picked it. And the messages I got in response to setting as a book club book were all like, oh my God, you're going to absolutely love this book. So I'm really excited to get into that. Okay, guys, let's get into this week's podcast. I am doing a girly chat episode, as you will see from the title. I'm so excited about this. I feel like I haven't done one in so long and I can't wait to answer your dilemmas. I feel like we've got some really good ones. Okay, let's just get straight in. Dilemma number one. Okay, I've just finished uni and have moved home to save up to go traveling. To say I'm going insane is an understatement. I need my independence, privacy and sanity back, but at what cost? If I move back to Leeds, I won't be able to save and maybe never go traveling. I've been back a month and there's nine more to go. Is it bad to be feeling like this so soon? And how will I do nine months of it? Need some big reassurance. Okay, first of all, I think this is so normal to feel like this. Like when you go from having that, like breaking away from your family and having that freedom and just having that nicer relationship where you have distance and you have privacy and you have that like freedom to not constantly answer to people and be in each other's space to then like take a step back in that sense and sorry when I say take a step back I don't mean take a step back in life or anything like that I mean more like take a step back back into that situation 
that you were living, you know, as a teenager growing up in your parents' house. When you step back into that, I think it's so normal to feel like that because it's just not what you've been used to for the last few years. And especially if you've got quite, you know, overbearing parents, parents that are love to know your business, maybe they're quite strict or it's very easy, I think, for parents to automatically kind of revert into the the way they were treating you when you were in their house at the age of say 16 do you know what I mean in the same way that it's quite easy to revert into your kind of more childish self I think when you go back home like I don't really do this but I know my sister for example always says this how she feels when she goes home and stays with my parents like she just goes so back to her like childhood version of herself and like you know wants my mum to cook her dinner all the time and just like very much like almost transports back in to that person like you know six years ago or whatever it was and I think that's the same with parents where they can like you know automatically go back and forget that actually you're this many years older and you've had this independence and you know the the relationship has evolved the relationship can evolve and it can be different and it is more like adult to adult now as it instead of adult to child and like you know your parents are always going to be protective over their children that's never going to change no matter how old you get but I think they forget that they don't need to go you know quite so far back where they're maybe not letting you do certain things or just like being a bit overprotective I mean I don't think it would hurt to give them a little reminder of the fact that you have been living independent for the last three years of them and like don't need them all up in your business but also really try and see the positive side of this because I know for example when I moved home after uni although yes there is that element of it where you do kind of feel like you're taking a step back at the same time I felt so grateful that I could live with my parents in that way like I felt so grateful that my parents first of all let me come home because I know a lot of people that their parents actually just wouldn't you know, wouldn't have a room for them to come back and live with them in, wouldn't necessarily want them to come back and let them live in that space or, you know, would be like waiting for them to leave kind of thing. So I think you have to see the the other side of it where for me, I felt like so lucky to be in my mid twenties and still feel welcomed in my parents' house, in my family home and still feel like I had a bedroom. Well, I did have a bedroom there, you know, still have a bedroom there, still have a, a great relationship with them. And be able to see them so much more than I got to when I was at uni because obviously yes the distance can strengthen a relationship I think with your parents because you appreciate them more but so then when you are spending more time with them you can get a bit frustrated but I felt so grateful to like be able to spend that time with them and not be like a grumpy teenager because you don't really you don't think like that when you're a teenager you just think I can't wait to leave this house and you know, why are they not letting me do this? And you're just getting angry and grumpy about absolutely anything and everything under the sun. So to have that like close relationship with your parents at an older age where you're not kicking off about everything all the time as a grumpy teenager is such a blessing. And to just be able to do little things together that you've been deprived of for the last few years, you know, simple things like cooking dinner together, sitting down and eating together as a family, even just like having a coffee with my mum in the morning. I would get up every morning and when I'd come back from the gym, I'd make me and my mum breakfast and I'd hand it in to her while she was on her little work Zoom calls. And I don't know, I, I think sometimes you can get too caught up in the fact that you don't have your own space. And as frustrating that is when you move back into your family home, I also think there's so many amazing things that come with it and I'm saying this from a very fortunate position where I do really get on with my parents so you know I know that's not the case for everyone and some people will really not enjoy being back in their family home and it really won't be the same case and they won't feel welcome and they won't feel accepted and everything so I know I'm speaking on this topic from a very fortunate position in that sense but I do think there is such a positive side to this and I think instead of thinking oh my god nine more months to go like how am I going to get through this I think if you can flip that on its head and think 
I get to live with my parents for nine months. I get to, you know, save that money that I would be spending on rent. I get to have quality time with them that I haven't really had over the last three years, apart from maybe like coming home at Christmas and that kind of thing. And maybe just have a little chat with them about just wanting a little bit more privacy. I also think it's important to like, establish your own like little routines and stuff like if you are finding that you're just like kind of reverting back to your childhood self and maybe relying on your parents for certain things like maybe try and take that independence that you did have and you were kind of using when you were living on your own or like with uni friends or whatever and kind of like bring that into your situation now if that makes sense do your own food shops for example and like have your own routines where you go meet up with different friends and go to the gym or do this and that do you know what I mean like have your own space and your own things that you do outside of your parents so that you don't feel so like oh my god I'm stuck here from like all day every day just with them under the same roof constantly but you'll get through it and you'll end up being able to go traveling on the other side of that so what an absolute blessing okay dilemma number two met an Aussie guy on holiday and really clicked rare for me he's visiting London for a weekend in two weeks as the last stop on his travels do I see him again or forget it because nothing can ever come of it oh my god no go and see him don't you dare not go and see him please I don't care if nothing can come of it you've got to do these things for the plot (laughs) and yes he might be the one that got away for no he won't be the one that got away for the rest of your life you never know what can come of these things if he's the love of your life and it's meant to be maybe something could come of it I don't think you should think like that and also dating isn't always to find the your forever person and to find the love of your life like you can date for fun you can date to find friends you can just date for like a bit of entertainment on a Friday night someone to go for a drink with you know because none of your friends are free and so I don't think you should let the fact that he's from Australia stop you from going and you never know you might then be able to go and visit him sometime when you travel Australia or something like that okay dilemma number three my friend broke up with her boyfriend for good reasons he wasn't a bad person just not mature enough and at times not committed enough but now they're both heartbroken and she is a mess I've never seen someone so heartbroken. She doubts her decision and I'm afraid I was too reassuring when she was making the decision to break up. Now I fear to do anything but listen. How else can I help her? What does a super heartbroken person need in the moment? Okay, first of all, you need to remember, like both of you, you and your friend need to remember that it was for good reasons. And so you shouldn't feel guilty for, not that you pushed that, but you know what I mean? You probably helped her make a, a, that decision. That was the good decision, the best decision for her to make. So I wouldn't feel guilty about that. You were just standing up for like what you thought was best for your friend and ultimately what she thought was probably best as well. Otherwise she wouldn't have done it. I think it's so easy after a breakup to sit there and look at the relationship with rose tinted glasses and only see the positives and sometimes honestly you gotta sit down and write a list of all the terrible things that the person did or the ways they made you feel to remind you of why you broke up with them or why you don't want to go back to that relationship and so maybe you should tell your friend to do that because that's always helped me (laughs) but no I know what you mean where you don't want to like keep reiterating the point while someone's already feeling bad and I don't think you need to do that like she's made the decision she probably knows it's the right decision maybe yes you can remind her of that and as I said tell her to write the list but I don't think you need to like keep kicking the I what's that phrase sorry not I literally can never remember any phrase ever and I always attempt it and then get it wrong (laughs) I don't think you need to like keep drilling that I think if anything just like hold space for her being upset about it whilst also being supportive of the breakup but not like too much like fuck him fuck you know what I mean sometimes when you go too much that way and then if like something does happen with them then they're like scared to talk to you about it because they really know how much you hate them or how much you they they know that you don't agree with it don't go too in on it but hold space for her being upset ask her what she wants because sometimes when you're first going through a breakup maybe all you want is just company but you don't necessarily want to talk about it but you just like want the company of people so you're not just like in bits all the time like I think when you're going through a breakup the mornings and the evenings are the hardest like during the day when you're kind of getting on with your own stuff you're maybe going to work whatever it is like you can kind of keep your head down and get on with it in that sense 
it's more like the evenings where you're used to spending time with them that can be more difficult. And so I think if you can spend more time with your friend, if that's what they want and you don't always have to talk about it like you can just sit there and watch tv in the same way that her and her partner might have sat there and watched tv you know what I mean sometimes you just need company and you need like reminded that you do have other people in your life and your world isn't going to end and you do have people that love and support you I just think that's a nice reminder when you're going through a breakup because when you come out of a breakup and you're so used to constantly that person being the person you turn to for everything so you know all the constant texts the daily updates when you get excited about the fact that some a parcel arrived or something it's like that constant communication with someone even if it's just like a little text here and there or a little good morning text and that can be so weird when you come out of a relationship you almost pick up your phone and go to type it and you're like oh shit wait I can't do that anymore and I think it's nice to know that you do have people that you can like still do that with so send her little nice good morning texts tell her to sleep well just like make it very known that you're in her life and she doesn't need to go back to him okay dilemma number four I'm moving to uni soon and me and my younger sister she's 14 aren't getting along at all will it get better when I leave how did you and your siblings fare when you all moved away So I personally think a household full of grumpy teenagers is a recipe for disaster. And when I say recipe for disaster, I don't mean that in the sense that there's nothing good that can come of it. No, I absolutely love my um, siblings and we all get on so well now. But that's not to say we haven't all had our like different periods of where we've kind of despised each other and when I say (laughs) kind of despise each other like there's always you always love your siblings you know what I mean like deep down you do always have love for them but like don't get me wrong there's times where we've all like completely had it out for each other for maybe like a solid year at a time (laughs) and that's just like as a result of being a hormonal grumpy teenager again and all living under the same roof and being on top of each other constantly like you're all going through different stages of your life because although there might only be like two years not even I think there's a year and a half between all of my siblings like a year and a half between me and my brother and a year and a half between him and my sister and in like adult terms that's nothing like a year between someone else is so minuscule when you're into like your late 20s but when you're young that gap feels not that it feels massive because you do feel like you're close in age but at the same time you're going through such different stages of your teenage years and so I think it's so normal to have a really strained relationship with your siblings at different points throughout that and it can be really disheartening when you like see other siblings getting on so well and just really feeling that strain between you and yours but I swear to you the distance will probably absolutely work wonders for you guys. I know by the time I was going away, I think we were all getting on so well and that was very much like the end of that real like bickering, fighting stage. Also, when you're away, there's just less to fight about. Do you know what I mean? Like you can't scrap about borrowing clothes because that's just like you don't live there anymore. It's not an issue. And then you give space for like getting to miss them and then getting excited to see them. And I honestly just think distance in that sense can work absolute wonders. But sometimes I think it's so sad that we will never like all live under the same roof and like have that time together again. I get really upset about that. I was actually thinking about doing an episode on like mourning your your childhood. I really deep this all the time. I have my own house. My sister has her own house. If my brother comes home, like I don't know we'll just never all live under the same roof again it's so weird and like what about when people start having their own families and then they start choosing their families over our family I don't want that no I don't want that (laughs) okay dilemma number five my 2024 resolution was no hinge tips for actually chatting to hot people in real life okay I back this resolution because sometimes you can just find yourself getting so like weirdly addicted to the apps and just do you know what I mean just mindlessly flicking through people as if it's like a game and nothing ever progressing don't get me wrong I think they're great I think dating apps are amazing I think the digitization of dating has it's been like a natural progression in our lives like it makes sense based on how much time we spend on our phones and how we interact 
these days. Do you know what I mean? So on one hand, I think it's so amazing. But on the other hand, I think there's something still so nice about just meeting someone in real life. And that is my tip for any of the dating apps actually, because I think there can be a really good starting point for actually meeting people in the first place, like actually being able to converse with someone that you wouldn't have necessarily bumped into in real life, but get it out of the app as soon as possible. Do you know what I mean? Like if you fancy someone, if you're feeling the the chemistry, if you just not even that actually not you don't even have to feel the chemistry if you just fancy someone just go on a date straight away or like have it organized within a week do not fuck about like don't wait around because there's no point in just like constantly communicating via a dating app like go on a real date and that's what I think dating apps are really good for is actually exposing you to people that you wouldn't necessarily bump into in real life because they might not go to the same places as you. They might live on the opposite side of town to you. Do you know what I mean? So in that way, I think it's so good. But yeah, as I said, just like get it out of the app as soon as possible. Have a rule with yourself. Just be like, if a date doesn't materialize within a week, we're done. But yeah, tips for actually chatting to hot people in real life. Our generation have become quite bad at small talk with people in public. And what I mean by that is having little conversations with your barista chatting to people in the gym, chatting to people when you're out in a walk, chatting to someone on public transport. Our generation is fucking terrible at this and it's something we all collectively need to improve on. And don't get me wrong, I know that sometimes that is just not what you want. You want to be shut off. You maybe need to get in the zone for something or you just don't feel like talking. And I fully understand that, you know, AirPods in, headphones on world out there's always going to be those times but I think consciously making an effort to actually engage with these people in our everyday life and you know in the things that we do is so important because not well not only because you might end up meeting someone that you can go out on a date with but also you can make friends you can find people with similar interests and hobbies because they're going to the same things as you I slag my dad off for chatting to anyone and everyone that he bumps into but honestly it's a really impressive skill that we all need to work on (laughs) that man could talk to a brick wall he speaks to every single person that goes in to the cafe that he goes to all the time. He's actually obsessed. Have I told this story? So I we're both obsessed with this cafe in Belfast called Cafe O. The, their coffee is elite, if you know, you know. And he's actually more obsessed with it than me, which if you knew me, you'd think that's not possible. I go and meet him after Pilates one morning. I was finished at half eight. I met him on the Umber Road at quarter to nine in Cafe O. He goes, this is my second Cafe O of the day. I was like, Grim, it's 8.45 in the morning. (laughs) What do you mean? It's your second cafe of the day. But yeah, he talks to every single person that goes in and out of the, the coffee shop. Like he knows everyone's names. He knows their life story. He knows their dog's name. He rings me being like, oh, spoke to so and so that you know from this. And I'm like, (laughs) hi <laughs> he knows everyone and I think as a generation the Gen Z's could all do with stepping it up where that's concerned because that's how you're gonna meet people realistically and it might not be a direct lead to someone but you could end up like being friends with someone and getting invited to something that they go to re- regularly that you didn't know about in your city and then meeting someone through that like I think a lot can come from those like natural interactions what's another tip well, obviously, a bit of liquid courage never goes amiss when it comes to dating. I met my boyfriend in a bar. Would I have chatted to him the way I did without being as drunk as I was? Probably not. Would we have bumped into each other if we weren't both drinking on the night? Probably not. I always say this, it's very much like invisible string theory with me and my boyfriend because we like know all of the same people I knew his brother really well, like his brother dated one of my good friends. We would like go to the same things the same nights out, but I think we were just always missing each other. Do you know when you just deeped that and you're like, whoa, that really was invisible strength theory. Anyway, a lot to be said about having a bit of liquid courage. You know what though? I think there's a very specific kind of night out that is good for meeting people. And let me explain what I mean by that. Going to a club, you're not meeting anyone. The music's too loud. 
people aren't interested in that like you're dancing maybe you'll talk to people in the smoking area i don't know but it's just not really the vibe people are out with like groups of friends do you know what i mean it's just you're not like meeting someone in that way and like having a good conversation at a nightclub you know like at a club club but then if you go to the other way where it's very much like chill sit down bar there's not enough mixing to meet anyone you know you're not gonna walk up to a table full of people and sit down with them that's way too intimidating so you kind of need this like happy medium of like a bar club do you know like a bit of a vibey bar that has a very kind of mingly social element to it whether that be in the actual place itself or in the smoking area and it not be like very much like sit down tables in different like corners of the room that all feels very boxed off and very intimidating to go up to it needs to be more mingly and like you bump into someone you know who introduces you to this person and then it's easier to go up to different people because you're not like approaching a full table it's a very specific kind of night out I think that is good for meeting people and that is my tip is to go on more of those nights also maybe join a running club I feel like that's what everyone's doing these days. I saw an article that was like, are running clubs the new dating like platform? So that could be an option. Put on a little no makeup makeup and your hottest running clothes and meet a few boys because you're not going to be meeting people in like more female led classes and you're not going up to anyone in the gym. Whereas running clubs are a very social thing. So that could be a shout. Maybe do couch to 5k if you're not a runner and just for the purpose of meeting someone at a running club. (laughs) Okay, dilemma number six. I need to know if you ever got to the bottom of this spot popping addiction. P.S. Love you so much, Queen. Um, No. (laughs) In short, no, I have not. It's so bad. No, you know what? It's not been as bad recently. I do think I'm a little bit more on top of it. I don't think I will ever be a person that can leave like a big in your face white head just sitting there. That's not me. I don't know how people do that. I will never be able to do that. However, what I more wanted to curb was the spending an hour in front of the mirror, getting fixated on like every single pore in my face only to realize that I've completely disassociated for the last hour and then take a step back and look at my face and it's the color of a tomato. That's what I wanted to avoid. I do think I've got better at that. I've worked out that I definitely use it as like a, like when I'm stressed or when I'm down, if I'm having a bad mental health week or if I'm just stressed, I find it like a stress reliever, which is really bizarre. I know apparently that's a form of OCD. I don't know how much truth there is in that, but I have definitely got better. I find if I'm having a night to myself, I'm way more likely to do it. Like if my boyfriend isn't there I'm more likely to if I'm stressed I'm more likely to if I wear makeup I'm way less likely to touch my face because like I'm not gonna start picking up my face when I have makeup on so I find like getting up and getting ready and doing my makeup in the morning and then just like not taking it off till I'm going to bed and doing my skincare is like really works for me which is weird because loads of people would find like obviously going makeup free is better for their skin and stuff but not for me also pimple patches have really helped me with this just knowing that I can just put that on it and that will do the work for me instead of because once I start I find it hard to stop so if I just don't start in the first place and just use pimple patches instead that is better but yeah no haven't got to the bottom of it definitely got better I think the lip picking has actually got worse I think I've been anxious recently and I think when I'm anxious I bite and pick my lips more and I actually keep catching sight of myself doing it and I'm like bitch you really need to stop this like this is not hot (laughs) this cannot be an ongoing thing I'm like actually really sick of myself so I keep telling myself okay I'm actually stopping now and then it's always in the evenings at like 9 p.m I'll be lying on the sofa in bed or something and just like subconsciously doing it and then I'm like fuck's sake that's another day where I've said I'm gonna stop and I haven't but I am gonna tackle it I promise (laughs) <laughs> if anyone else has tips on how to stop with the lip thing I would love to know because it's actually a serious issue if I carry like blistex on me at all times I can avoid it mostly because I just keep putting that on but if I ever find myself without my blistex it's not looking good bruv okay dilemma number seven he still has photos of him and his ex on his instagram is that a big deal 
I hate to break it to you, and I know a lot of people won't agree with me on this. I think this is a very chronically online way to think. (laughs) I really don't get why people make such a big deal about this. I have photos of all of my previous exes on my Instagram and I have no intention of ever deleting that. And not because I'm like weirdly hanging on to them or anything like that, but I just think, why would you delete it? Like, that's a part of my life. I'm not trying to hide that. I'm not trying to deny that that those people were a part of my life. In fact, I'm grateful for that part of my life that has led me to here. And I don't know. I just find that whole, like, w- one thing to, like, completely rid your partner of, like, their exes and everything to do with that. Just a really strange concept. Don't get me wrong. I understand why maybe, like, a post of them like confessing their love for them or something would be a bit weird you'd be like "Eh, okay get rid of that one but like keep the rest I get that I remember posting a photo of my ex being like I don't know if it was back in like 2020 or 2021 or something but I remember posting a photo of being like what a year roll on the next roll on 2021 with you or whatever it was and then we broke up like a couple months later and ever since then I've just found that post so funny like I remember putting it on my private story and being like this age dwell (laughs) I don't know like I just don't get why people get so caught up about this don't get me wrong I understand why people have their their bits with exes I understand why exes can be a little bit triggering but it was a part of their life it, that's never gonna change you can't deny that what's wrong with the little holiday photo do you know what I mean like it's really not that deep I do think it's a case of people being chronically online because I don't think I don't think like millennials up would well maybe there would be millennials that think that I don't think older generations would ever give a flying fuck about that and if one of my partners was to ever be like like question me on why I still have photos of my exes on my social media I'd be like why do you think? Because, do you know what I mean? (laughs) Like, I was with them at the time. I was obviously posting them at the time. I do, do you know what? Like, I know it can be a bit weird when you, like, click on your partner's profile and it's, like, if they don't post a lot, then it's, like, you know, it's you. And then two posts ago, it was their ex. (laughs) And even though the posts are, like, three years apart, they're, you know, nearly side by side on Instagram. I can see why you'd be, like, eh. So maybe in that case, but... In my case, you know, there are probably hundreds of photos where I really don't think it's that deep. All right, let's move on to our final dilemma, dilemma number eight. Hi, Emma. Here's my dilemma. I love my boyfriend so much and we have so much fun together, but I know in my heart he's not my forever. Do I stay and enjoy the ride for now or am I holding myself back? Look, I have spoken multiple times about the fact that I don't think there's anything wrong with knowing that your boyfriend isn't your forever like before this relationship I don't think I've ever thought that in a relationship I think there's something nice about not having thought that in previous relationships because then when you do get in a relationship where you're like oh this is end game then you're like so sure of it because you're like I've never felt this before I know a lot of people will say if well if you don't see it as end game and you don't see them being your forever why would you be with them but I actually don't think that's very realistic and I think maybe people's perceptions of their relationships are just a little bit different and some people are able to be a bit more real about them like they're able to be like I love this person and I love my life currently with them and like our relationship is really great and works for now but that doesn't mean this is what I want long term and I don't think there's anything wrong with thinking that way I think there's something wrong with thinking that way when the relationship is like hurting you or making you anxious or they're treating you badly do you know what I mean if you're not enjoying the relationship if it's dragging you down and therefore you know this is not my forever why the fuck are you staying in it do you know what I mean sack it off move on it obviously is holding you back in that situation however if you're really enjoying the relationship and you're enjoying like just dating them and like being great friends with them and the sex is good and I don't know, maybe you have like some fun travel plans and stuff. Like, I really don't think that you should be freaking out about ending that with them. Now, if the thoughts are coming into your brain, that'll be the start of it. Do you know what I mean? Because if you're already thinking that, if that's stuck in your head now, that's only gonna, that thought's only gonna grow and grow and grow and you're gonna 
find more things that will kind of confirm that within your own head if that makes sense so I think the fact that you're like thinking about that now will probably mean that you probably will end the relationship in you know the not so far future but does that mean you need to like wake up tomorrow and cut ties I don't think so I think you can enjoy it for what it is now the thing is with relationships like this when you know it's not end game all it takes is just like something happening either someone doing something that just makes you be like okay this is it or a change in situation and what I mean by that is maybe you know someone moving someone getting a new job someone deciding they want to go traveling on their own like all it takes is just one little thing and then once that thing happens it's like okay now we can end it and I don't mean now we can end end it in like a a relief kind of way I mean more like uh, okay now we're ready to end it and close that chapter of our lives so I wouldn't put pressure on it but I also just think if you're already thinking this it's an inevitable (laughs) <laughs> like you definitely are gonna end it you know it but you've said yourself he's not your forever so I think yeah it's just a case of when that will happen but I think focusing too much on someone not being your forever it's not really worth it do you know what I mean like I obviously knew at the age of 17 my school boyfriend wasn't gonna be my forever but I didn't deep it he was my boyfriend at the time I loved him do you know what I mean it was what it was we had fun while it lasted and that's like, you know, a fun chapter of my life. And you don't need to be hung up on the fact that they're not your forever, is what I'm trying to say. But then there'll be other people that will tell you if they're not your forever, why are you in the relationship? Some people would rather just be single if that was the case. But I don't think I would have rather been single at that time because I, I really enjoyed that relationship. I don't know. There's like two sides to this. And I think both sides are valid. There's just always going to be like an opposing argument to that one. Sorry, that was probably the most bullshit answer ever. I don't know if I helped you whatsoever. (laughs) But we're going to leave it there for the dilemmas on this week's episode. Thank you all so much for sending in your dilemmas. I absolutely loved reading them. There's some good ones. I also have so many more where that came from. So we can definitely do this again soon. I don't know why I left it so long to do another girly chats episode because I always just forget how much I love these but yeah thank you all so much for listening. If you're watching on YouTube remember to subscribe and like the video. If you're listening on any podcast platform you can rate and review the podcast. Give me a little five stars. Oh and make sure to follow it as well and then it'll come up on your new episodes playlist because that's how I see all my favorite podcast episodes coming out like all the new episodes coming out but yeah love you guys long time I will speak to you in next week's episode bye